Hello, Internet. It is I, the Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Recaps. Okay, so I already did part one of this, where I covered all the theatrical releases, theatrical only releases of 2021. Now it is time to cover all of the controversial day and date releases of 2021. Now, those releases being the streaming movies, aka movies that were released both in theaters and on a streaming platform at the exact same time. All right, we're covering those movies, but the main four streaming services we're going to be focusing on are going to be Disney Plus, HBO Max, Peacock, and Paramount Plus. Now, uh, HBO Max obviously has the most movies because they made the rather um, insane decision <laughs> to make all their 2021 movies fall under the day and day release format. So it's quite a bit of movies to talk about there. Disney Plus only did their Disney Plus premiere access to only four movies in 2021, which is not a whole lot. And Peacock and Paramount Plus released their movies on their streaming service. Only two of them each. But HBO Max is going to account for the majority of this video. So, get ready. And plus, there won't be as many movies to talk about here as there was the last episode. So, it, won't, it shouldn't be as long. So, that's good. <laughs> so, anywho, let's just let's get started. So, our first movie to talk about when it comes to streaming is the little things here this was the second in the hbo second movie a part of the hbo max experiment the first was wonder woman 1984 which came out right at the end of 2020 christmas day 2020 started this whole thing and this was the first of 2021 now because of the whole experiment no one knew how this movie was going to do I mean, if it came out pre-pandemic, it would have done fine. But the pandemic and the streaming part of it just made things ultra confusing. And very just up in the air. And yeah, it didn't do great. It cost $30 million and made $29 million worldwide. Not good. Granted, it was in a very bad situation uh, it only opened like a little over 2,000 theaters. Like I think half of the theaters in the country were closed at this point. So things were just extremely bleak. But, I mean, it, it could have done worse, but it could have done so much better. So, yeah, I call it a flop. I don't think it was, I definitely don't think it was successful. So that was it for that month for January. February, we got another one. Our second HBO Max movie, Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, this did even worse than The Little Things. It only made like seven million domestic, on like a budget of twenty six million. What can I say about that? That you know, it's just a disaster, <laughs> a financial disaster. And you know, I know it's a good movie, but again, like. The deadly combination of releasing when majority of theaters in the country were closed. And the HBO Max release killed it immediately at this point in time. Because at this point, the majority of people were more comfortable seeing a movie at home than in the theater. Nobody was going to the theater at this point in time. So, yeah, these low box office numbers do start to make a lot of sense. But then that kind of changed later that month in February with another HBO Max movie, our third, Tom and Jerry. Despite this movie being absolutely terrible, I mean, I haven't seen it, but I've heard quite a few things about it, and none of them are good, not even remotely good. <laughs> this movie was the first to actually make some type of cash under a streaming release because... It opened with like 14 million, which shocked a lot of people. People were like, oh my god, a movie didn't do terrible? We haven't had that in forever. <laughs> and 
And domestically, it only made like 46 million, made 132 million worldwide, budget of 50 million. I mean, it's not a huge chip, but considering the, cer the specific circumstances of being like in less theaters than normal and the stream release, I call it a hit. I call it a success, even though it doesn't deserve that success at all. It's a hit in my eyes. So we got our first hit of 2021 for the streaming side. So it's Tom and Jerry, you are hit number one. I wish it was something else, but that's just how it, how it went. <laughs> So, yeah. Now, so that's three HBO Max movies. Now we got our first Disney Plus premiere access movie. Well, technically that's not true. We had Milan 2020, but that cancels theatrical release. This is the first to do a day and date. So, yeah. Hey, Raya, the first Disney Plus premiere access movie of 2021. Love was running on this movie, you know, you know, being a Disney animated movie you know the whole disney animation their departments had quite a bit of a, a second renaissance if you will after like the 90s i mean like tangled wreck and ralph frozen big hero 6 utopia moana all massive commercial and critical successes naturally you know expectations were a bit higher for rare okay they weren't super high because the whole release strategy of it all because this thing was weird because unlike HBO Max, where if you had HBO Max, or specifically the, uh, the ad-free version, then you could just watch those movies for free. Well, as long as they were on there for like the 30 days they were on there. Raya did things differently. If you wanted to watch this movie on Disney+, Plus and pretty much any of the other Premier Access movies on Disney+, Plus, you had to pay $30 to do so. <laughs> Which is crazy. I never did this because I thought it was a huge waste of money. Especially considering these movies were going to be on Disney Plus in a few months anyway. So what's the point unless you are really desperate to watch these movies right then and there. I mean, if it was like a family, sure. Because, you know, a family going to the theater is more expensive than one person going to the theater. But if you're just one person, $30, that's too much. That's way too much. That's stupid. But I'm not here to harp on that too much. We're going to talk about this box office. It didn't do good. <laughs> it only made $54 million domestic. And about a little over $100 million worldwide. Which is quite dismal for a Disney movie. Particularly a Disney animated movie. And yeah. like At the time it kind of made you wonder which... Or which uh, strategy was more successful? Was it Tom and Jerry or was it Raya? Because really, that's all we had when it comes to movies, you know, on streaming. We didn't have a whole lot of examples. <laughs> they didn't exist yet. So, yeah, but this movie was kind of labeled as a flop while Tom and Jerry was labeled as a hit. So, and that's what I'm going to say too. So, yeah. So, so far we got one hit <laughs> when it comes to streaming. And out of four, which is pretty bad. But that's going to change very, very quickly because of a certain movie. Our next HBO Max movie, Godzilla vs. Kong. All right. Now, a lot was riding on Godzilla vs. Kong. It was the first true blockbuster-esque movie to come out in 2021. And since things were so dismal, expectations weren't super high, naturally. But Godzilla vs. Kong destroyed all expectations. It did way better than anyone thought it would. Because, you know, well, this opened on a Wednesday, like for an Easter, right? And I thought, eh, it'll, it could do fine, but I'm not, my hopes are not high. But then those changed when I saw its Wednesday number of like 9.6. That was bigger than some movies opening weekends. That was just one day. And I was like, oh, wow. This movie might be a really big deal. This could do way better than I thought. But way better, but yeah, way better than I expected. And then, boom, it opened like 32 million, which crushed all other pandemic movies at that point. Uh, which just showed you that even with the streaming release, 
if the movie looked good or if it looked or if it looked like it deserved to be on the big screen, people would watch it. And it was the it made a hundred million over a hundred million domestic, which you know considering that fact it would have made way more in the pre pandemic days, but whatever. But worldwide it was even better. It made over four hundred sixty seven million worldwide. That's better than Godzilla King of Monsters, which was considered a disappointment back in twenty nineteen. So, yeah, this movie was a hit, undisputed hit in my eyes. For you know, considering everything, like from stream from the streaming side, the box office side, this movie had the best of both worlds. So it's our second hit of of, of the streaming movies. So yay. And it wouldn't be too long before our next streaming movie came out. Also HBO Max. Mortal Kombat. Okay. This movie. <laughs> okay, so Mortal Kombat. Obviously, no one expected a repeat performance of, you know, after um, Godzilla vs. Kong. It didn't help that there had been a Mortal Kombat movie in like 24 years. The last one was Annihilation, a movie I love, but I know for a fact is god awful. <laughs> so, yeah, and plus, video game movies as a whole have a bad reputation, even with hits like Detective Pikachu and the Sonic movie. So,. Yeah, but this, you know, it looked interesting. It got a lot of people hyped and interested. And when it came out, it had a weird run. Like, it had a really good opening weekend over like, 23 million, which was still great for the pandemic at the time. And again, showed that if for certain movies, people will show up. But then things took a very bad turn. The movie was horrendously front-loaded felt like 73 percent next week and then never recovered and it only made about 42 million total 83 million total and 40 million domestic on a budget of 55 million uh, like that's not the worst but it's not great <laughs> i wouldn't call it a hit really i mean in the grand scheme in the grand scheme of things i wouldn't call it a hit in terms of box office, but when it comes to streaming, this movie apparently did fantastic on HBO Max. A ton of people watched it, including me. I was part of that number. I think it had the biggest launch for an HBO Max on the streaming service out of any HBO Max movie. Which, I mean, I guess it can be labeled as a hit in that regard, but not so much a hit domestic worldwide, but... It could have been worse, but I don't know, man. It's hard to call it a hit, a legitimate hit, because it did well on one on one end, but didn't do well on another end. You know what? Screw it. I'm calling it a hit because its opening weekend was really good, and even though it completely fell apart after that, that opening weekend was big enough to be labeled a hit, even if it's a minor one. So that's hit number three. So, so far we have two HBO Max hits and, yeah, three HBO Max hits. I, I forgot. Raya was a flop. So, three HBO Max hits. So, people are like, oh, HBO Max, you know, it's not great. You know, theaters are still kind of getting screwed over, but these movies can make money. This could actually go fine. Oh, just you wait. <laughs> just watch the rest of the video and you'll see how much that narrative changed. <laughs> Okay, that's all we have now. Our next HBO Max movie. Here we go. Those Who Wish Me Dead. Oof. This did awful. Just just terrible. I didn't expect it to do well anyway. I mean, the movie just... It, it, it would never would have done well. Pandemic, pre-pandemic, any era. It just, it just had nothing really going for it. And, yeah, the box office, yikes. Opened, like, a little over... Less than three million, made seven million total. Uh, seventeen million worldwide. Like, what? What is there to say? Is there anything to say? It's a bomb. Simple as that. It's a. It's a bomb. It tanked. It did horrible. So, 
that's a big L for HBO Max, and that L, the L's would only at, uh, grow, just add on after that. All right, our next Disney Plus Premier Access movie, Cruella. All right, Cruella is a weird one because first of all, before it came out, no one really asked for it. Uh, it was another unnecessary villain movie, similar to like a Maleficent, and. At the time, we're calling this a family movie is highly debatable because it's PG-13. Yeah, PG-13, so it's a bit more intense than a family movie. But it still has the Disney branding around it. So technically it counts, but not really. So, yeah. But yeah, at the time when it was coming out, things weren't going that great. <laughs> Besides, you know, Godzilla vs. Kong. And even, you know, even, like, Tom and Jerry and uh, Mortal Kombat only did okay. They did fine. But, yeah, after Raya, expectations were not good for this. But it somewhat succeeded those low expectations. Because it opened up, like, 21 million, which was way better than Raya. And it made 86 million domestic, 228 million worldwide, which is again way bigger than Raya. But for like live action Disney movies, like Disney remake, reimaginings, whatever you want to call them, it did really bad. <laughs> but you know, it, it's getting a sequel apparently, so it's a success in that regard. But when I when it comes to the box office. I don't think it's that successful. I don't think it did that great. <laughs> and when it comes to like its Disney Plus numbers, they didn't do that great there either. It kind of just did whatever. I don't. It's they don't want to release real numbers for this for these movies, so it makes it hard to judge if they're even successful or not. So, yeah, that's frustrating. <laughs> uh yeah, uh, I'm not going to label it as a hit because I don't see it as a hit. But it it did better than I thought. So it's got that going for it. But I, I wouldn't call it a hit. So we're still at three hits so far. All HBO Max. We're about to have a fourth hit with Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It. Okay, Conjuring 3. Now, the Conjuring, I mean, it's been around for a hot minute. Since 2013, pretty much all the movies in the series were successful. So, yeah. Even though some of them are were not very good. The series was still still made quite a bit of cash for Warner Brothers. I think it's the biggest horror series ever when it comes to the box office. So, I mean, it's not too surprising that Conjuring 3 made money. But what was surprising is that how much it actually made when you think about the circumstances. Because it opened with, like... 24 million which a lot of people thought it would open like 15 so the fact that it opened with 24 was like wow wow yes this is great <laughs> and uh yeah like open with that had decent legs and like 65 million domestic 200 million worldwide on a budget of 40 million easy hit no doubt undisputed hit and it wasn't like so far off from like the franchise average that it was labeled as a disappointment so yeah i call it a hit definite hit so let's hit number four oh <laughs> this is gonna be the last hbo max hit you're gonna see for a long time <laughs> because the the downfall begins now <laughs> in the heights oof all right in the heights in the heights in the heights the first musical of 2021. And I already talked about the latter two that came out. Dear Evan Hansen, West Side Story. But this was the first. And when I made my original prediction, I thought, you know, with this movie, with the cheery atmosphere, and the fact that HBO Max movies were doing okay, and you know, great reviews, and Lin Manuel Miranda's name, you know, because, I mean, the dude made Hamilton, like, he was a part of this. I mean, this came from him. Well, not really him. It was from uh, John M. Chu who did like Crazy Rich Aces, which was also a big hit. So this movie had a lot going for it. At least that's what I thought. But the movie actually came out. 
and it did horrible. <laughs> it absolutely tanked. Over like 11 million, maybe like 29 million domestic, 43 million were bought on a budget of 55 million. Bomb. Bomb. E easy bomb right there. <laughs> There's no dispute in that. And I didn't know what really happened, but I guess I figured out that Lemon Bob Miranda, like if it if it's not Hamilton, his name is worthless. <laughs> That's what I've learned. And you know the fact that I don't know. I mean musicals. I mean they can be big hits. We've seen plenty of big musicals like in the past, particularly the past decade. Well, like say, so I'm trying to think of a couple off the top of my head. It's like Miz, Into the Woods, Great Showman, La La Land, just to name a few. But then you also have Cats, all right? Not every musical can hit a high note. <laughs> and this just happened to be one that could not hit that high note. And it wasn't the only one. The Irvin Hansen and West Side Story did just as bad as those. And it kind of just makes you think, is the movie musical dead? It just might be. <laughs> At this point. But it could be saved. I don't know if we'll save it. But it could be saved by a movie. I mean, I mean I don't think it will be dead for too long. But at this point it is not good. For the genre. But yeah for. When it comes to everything. Even it's HBO Max numbers. Were pretty dismal. So this movie wasn't a success in any way. So yeah. Like it is a bomb. So. Yeah, that's that's not a good sign. Keep going. Now in July. Boss Baby Family Business. Our first Peacock movie. Boss Baby 2. This is a weird one. <laughs> Cause this movie was like delayed a few times, like many movies. And it was supposed to come like in September, but then they made the weird decision to push it up to July with the Peacock strategy attached to it. So I thought that was weird. But the thing with the Peacock strategy is that you would only, like, Peacock has, like, three tiers. You got, like, free, $5, and $10. Free means you're not going to get much. <laughs> if you actually pay, you get more. Like, $5, you get pretty much everything. $10, you don't have to deal with ads. I think you might get some extra things. But, you know, for Boss Baby Family Business, like, the only way you were able to watch this on Peacock when it was on Peacock it was, um, you gotta pay that money. You had to buy Peacock to watch this, so. But it's not as extreme as, say, a $30 Disney Plus Premier Access purchase, so this is not that. But, yeah. Yeah. So that happened, and with Boss Baby Family Business, his performance, how did it do? Not too good. <laughs> not too good at all. Now, I already said the family market was... Just not there. Plenty of movies just not cut in the mustard. <laughs> um, you know, that, you know, last year. And this just happened to be one of them. Because all of them were like 16 million, but like 57 million domestic, 146 million worldwide on a bunch of 82 million. Not good. Its processor did infinitely better. It made like 500 million worldwide. I mean, hell, like Boss Baby 2's overall total domestically was barely higher than the first movie's opening weekend so this proves several things one the family movie last year was horrible <laughs> the market was just absolutely abysmal two just because a gimmick worked once doesn't mean it will work twice and three you know streaming uh, the success rate at even at this point was not good and it was only gonna get worse so yeah boss baby 2 i don't see it as a hit so pfft. let's move on okay our third disney plus premiere access movie and no doubt the biggest of them all in fact the biggest streamer release of them all black widow oh boy <laughs> what what can i say about this so black widow supposed to come out may 2020 it didn't happen. Got delayed a few times. And then it was announced that we get the Disney Plus Premiere Access treatment, which was just like, what? This? A big Marvel movie getting that treatment? That seems risky. Like, extremely risky. I don't think that's going to work out. 
and it didn't really work out. I mean, initially, it was looked like it was going fine. Like, its boss house was going pretty good. Like, like the first day, it was going great. It had like 13 million previews, 39 million opening day. I was like, oh, wow, this movie might do well. But then the next day happened, and it just crumbled after that. It barely doubled its opening weekend after opening day. That's that's a very bad sign. And then the second weekend, oof, 68% drop. And then 55% drop after that. And yeah, this one was front-loaded as hell. It only made like 83 million, 183 million after an 80 million debut. And it only made like 375 million on a budget of 200 million, which is not good at all for a Marvel movie. The only one that did really worse was the Incredible Hulk, the redhead stepchild of the MCU. So that's not, it's not great. Being in company with the Incredible Hulk, Incredible Hulk is not a good thing. And not to mention the whole release of this movie caused a whole lawsuit with ScarJo and Disney because well, apparently with the contract she made with, you know, for Black Widow, that contract stated this will be a theatrical release only. They didn't say it was going to be Disney Plus Premier Access. So she found, she realized that. She got pissed. She sued Disney. They had a bit of a war for like a month. But ultimately, they settled things. She got like a, I think she got a, a pay of like $60 million, like from that. So she definitely came out the winner in that fight. <laughs> Yeah, but overall, like, I mean, like, the the decline of Black Widow, like, it could be for a couple reasons. One, the movie, looking back, I mean, I thought it was, it's, it's, eh, it's really meh. Some people really don't like it, but I think it's just meh. It's like a whatever movie. But that decline was easily explained due to, you know, piracy. Because, obviously, once a movie is, like, on, like, a streaming platform, once it's in the Digiverse, it'll only be a matter of time before it'll be free. Unlike some, you know, people pirate it for free, and there goes, and there goes that lost revenue. <laughs> there goes that revenue that you could have made. It's now gone. <laughs> and, yeah, like... You know, Black Widow, I've said so much about it. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't call it a hit. I mean, sure, it made, apparently it made a bit of money on Disney Plus, like, I think well over 100 million on Disney Plus. So that, again, I have to add that to the total, but again, it makes it confusing. But I wouldn't call it a hit. I don't think it worked out all that great. And plus, this movie, it should have came out a good. Five years ago? <laughs> At least five years ago. But they waited until after the character died in Endgame. Why? <laughs> that was such a dumb choice. And it bit him in the ass. Because <laughs> the movie didn't do great. So, yeah, that's it for Black Widow. I definitely wouldn't call it a hit. So, we're still at four hits right now. <laughs> that number hasn't improved at all. It's going to continue to not improve with our next movie, Space Jam A New Legacy. The bane of my existence. <laughs> a movie I absolutely despise now. But yeah, Space, but anyway, Space Jam 2. Obviously a sequel to Space Jam. Nice, the movie came out in 1996. Had Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny, and the Looney Tunes. It was a dumb movie that a lot of people really liked. It was a big success. Still the biggest basketball movie ever made. Still to this day. It's really impressive. Became a bit of a meme. The internet seemed to really like it. And then they decided like 25 years later. Let's make another one. But let's have Le LeBron James instead. And not only that. Let's make it a, a really soulless, heartless, cash grab corporate movie. That makes like does like just the worst things for like a family movie. Just makes like the worst, most cringiest humor imaginable. 
And not only that, let's make it a goddamn advertisement for HBO Max, where we have all these Warner Brothers properties just tacked on in there, thrown in there for no reason other than, hey, look at that reference. You see that? That means it's funny, even though it's not. <laughs> and not only that, the whole freaking Lola Bunny controversy, how they changed their design, and a lot of people on the internet was, were upset because of course they were, and... The fact that Pepe the Pew was cut from this movie for stupid reasons, even though Pennywise and the freaking um, dudes from Clockwork Orange were there. So you tell me a cartoon skunk couldn't be in this movie, but a child murderer and a rapist could be in this children's movie. All right, then. <laughs> It was just a bunch of we just this whole movie was a hot mess and never should have existed. But anywho, yeah, we have to talk about its actual numbers. They're quite bad. Like its opening weekend was all right, over like thirty one million. I was like, okay, this has a chance. And then that second weekend hit and it just fell off the face of the earth, like sixty nine percent drop. Only made seventy million total domestically. Yikes! It made one hundred forty-three million worldwide on a budget of one hundred fifty. Big yikes! Big bomb right here. And yeah, like this. Uh, <laughs> this movie never should have happened. This movie was one of the biggest mistakes we've made in the twenty twenties. Easily, <laughs> not COVID related. Okay. When it comes to the movies, this was one of the biggest mistakes. And I feel like uh, as time goes on, this is going to get hated more and more and more. It's probably going to be worse of the decade, maybe. That's what I think. I think it deserves to be worse of the decade because it was all full. Although not quite as bad as seeing an emoji movie, it was still very bad. So I'm kind of glad it failed. It deserved to fail. <laughs> so yeah, that was Space Jam 2. Another HBO Max bomb. I think I believe you're starting to see it's a, something that will soon start to become a running theme. <laughs> so we gotta scroll down a little bit. Okay, our last Disney Plus Premier Access movie, Jungle Cruise. Uh, this movie just hmm. before it came out, I was convinced it was gonna bomb hard. I don't know. It didn't seem to be a lot of interest surrounding. It. I mean, sure you had. The Rock and Lee Blunt as a duo. Both have had hits. But star power ain't everything. I mean, sure. You had Free Guy, which was basically all Ryan Reynolds. But not every movie can be a Free Guy. Okay? Uh, not every movie can be successful just because they have big names attached to it. So, you know, with Jungle Cruise, I was like... I was expecting the absolute worst. But... It did a little better than I thought. It opened with like thirty-five million, which was good-ish, but then it had somewhat long legs, and it made over a hundred million. One of the few movies in twenty twenty-one to do so, like a hundred million domestically. Like not too many movies could say that in twenty twenty-one, especially streaming movies. And um, yeah, it only made like two hundred million worldwide, which is pretty bad. I think the budget was like two hundred million, so that's a big disaster. Granted, it doesn't include Disney Plus money, but I don't think it made that much to really make up for it. But apparently, it's getting a sequel, so someone at Disney thought it was successful. <laughs> but then again, this was like, well, this is a bit more racier than the average family movie. But I guess it can be like like Corella. It's kind of iffy on whether it's a film movie or not. But considering its genre, it did it did okay. It, d it no doubt would have done better if it came out when it was supposed to, like July 2020 with no pandemic. But it, I'm not calling it a, a hit because it's certainly not that. But it's not a complete miss either because it did... It hit some uh, milestones that a lot of movies just didn't see in 2021. So, yeah, it's not a hit. It's not a real hard miss. So, it's weird. 
thank God this is the last Disney Plus movie they came about, so I no longer had to be confused on whether they were hits or not. Okay, next for HBO Max, The Suicide Squad. This makes me sad. Because as you know, I love this movie. I really do. It's one of my favorites of the year. I think if you ask me, like, my top five of the year for 2021, there's Spider-Man No Way Home. There's Quiet Place Part 2. There's this. There's Free Guy. I don't know about Free Guy. It's probably a bit lower. There's, like, I think those... Uh, there's Dune. Uh, and... I don't know what else... What else could fit that fifth slot? Maybe... Darn it. <laughs> I guess Shang-Chi. No, No Time to Die I think was a little better. But those are like my top five in no particular order. And, you know, with this movie, you know, it was directed by James Gunn, who got the gig after he got fired from Guardians 3, but he would ultimately get rehired for that movie. But yeah, he made this before he made Guardians 3. Uh, you know, had a big cast. You know, the movie looked pretty decent from the trailers when you actually saw the movie the movie was great you had a lot of great humor great action it was you know it was the total package when it comes to uh a superhero movie a good superhero movie and one that feels somewhat different and it proves that james gunn knows what the hell he's doing with the genre unfortunately the movie bombed badly (laughs) it Despite all that acclaim, it did terrible. It only opened with like twenty six million, which compared to the first Suicide Squad in twenty sixteen, that movie, despite being hated by everyone, that movie was fueled from good advertising, good advertising and good trailers. It opened like hundred and thirty three million. It opened to that much in twenty sixteen. This like only opened like twenty six million domestically. It only made fifty five million total. That's less than the first Suicide Squad's opening day. That's depressing as hell. And even worse, its worldwide number was abysmal. 167 million worldwide on a budget of like, I think 180? 185. That's terrible. There's no way to sugarcoat it. That's an awful, awful, awful uh, performance. And it sucks because this movie deserves so much better. But nobody watched the damn thing. Probably because everybody was scared off. Scared from watching another Suicide Squad movie. Because the first one was so bad. And I can't even blame them that much for it. Because that first Suicide Squad movie was really awful. And it doesn't help that people were confused on what this movie was. People were like, was this a reboot? Was this a sequel? What is this? (laughs) I was confused for a while too. So yeah, it's no real surprise that it did as poorly as it did, even though I really I really hoped for the best for it, but just my hopes didn't turn to a reality, which yeah, it was it was a sad time. But at least, you know, I know it's getting this Peacemaker show next week on HBO Max. So the series it still lives on somewhat, so it's and hopefully something happens with this universe. Because I really like this universe. This little mini universe that James Gunn set up. I'm hoping it gets expanded upon later. I hope they just don't throw it in the trash. But yeah, the Suicide Squad, it's a bomb. A sad bomb, but a bomb nonetheless. So, yeah, it's depressing. But I'm really hoping it gets a, a, a real second life. And I think it will. Because I think it's just that damn good. Okay, skipping through August a little bit. Paw Patrol the movie, our first Paramount Plus movie to be in the video. Now, like HBO Max, like if you had already had Paramount Plus, you could watch the movie for free. And this doesn't even have like a time limit. Like you can it's still on there now after coming out in August, so you can if you got Paramount Plus, if you really like Paw Patrol, you can watch that movie. As many times as you want. But, anywho, yeah. Paw Patrol. As I already said, family movie, market, bad. (laughs) Really bad. So, yeah, expectations were very low for this. 
even despite the fact that you know, it was based off a very popular brand in the form of Paw Patrol. You see this brand everywhere in the store. Everywhere. If you go to a Walmart, you will see this on everything. It is inescapable. Like, this is such a huge brand. But even with that brand, the chances of success were not too great. Uh, and, and it didn't help that uh, Regal Cinemas... You know, one of the biggest movie theater chains in America refused to play the movie because it it got the Paramount Plus treatment. So that didn't help it at all. But to Paw Patrol movies credit, it did pretty all right. It opened like thirteen million, made forty million world, no, forty million domestic. This worldwide number I don't think is accurate. I think it made over a hundred million worldwide. I'm gonna check off screen. Paw Patrol the movie. Yeah, made 130 million worldwide. So this number isn't exact. Yeah, this number is ac- isn't accurate. But yeah, like 130 million worldwide on a budget of like 26 million. That's pretty good. That's a hit. That's a definite hit. And it's getting a sequel in 2023. That's supposed to be theatrical only, but we'll see if that comes true. But yeah, I call it a hit. It's a hit. I mean, nothing else to say, really. So, that's our fifth hit. We have five. (laughs) Five hits so far when it comes to streaming movies. So, yay. It's five. And, oh, God. (laughs) Here we go. Let's just get this over with. Reminiscence. HBO Max. Rears his ugly head again. Oh, this movie. Like, I remember doing my prediction video for it. Like, I didn't think it would do well at all. Like, I thought it would only make, open like 9 million or something. Like, make 25 million. I knew it would be a bomb. But my god. I, somehow my abysmal expectations were still too, way, way too goddamn high. (laughs) Because this movie had one of the worst performances I've ever seen out of a major major studio movie. It only opened less than two million dollars for like a movie open over three thousand theaters. That's the worst ever in history. And only made less than four million domestic, fifteen million worldwide on a budget of sixty seven million. Like what the like <laughs> It's a disaster. Forget bomb. It's an outright disaster. There's no positives to this movie. Not one positive, I can say. And the fact is, this movie was doomed to fail at any point in history. But with HBO Max and the pandemic, that was just... That was was just a, a lethal combination. That was just poison to this movie. And, yeah, it just had one of the worst performances I've ever seen in it. Yeah. Easily the worst HBO Max <laughs> performance out of all of them. Easily the worst. So, yeah. And the failures of HBO Max continue with Malignant, a movie I did see. And it was a wild ride, man. It was one of the strangest, most you know, insane movies I've seen in a while. It legit made my jaw drop <laughs> a few times because I didn't know what the hell was happening, but it was entertaining at least. But what wasn't good was its box office. Now, with you know, when it came out, like the weekend it came out was like September, right? In recent years, Warner Brothers has had quite a bit of success releasing horror movies in September. You know, but you know the it movies and the nun all doing fantastic for the month. So you think, oh, this could do well, especially since James Wan is directing this. I mean, the man he started Saw, he started Insidious, he started The Conjuring. He's even had hits outside the horror genre like Aquaman and um, Fury Seven. Like this should do at least okay. No, it did not. Not at all. 
It only opened like five million dollars, like thirteen million domestic, thirty-three million worldwide. Let me look up the budget real quick because it's not listed on uh, the website. Forty million. Okay, at a budget of forty million, so this is bad. <laughs> it's a dud. Even though I really liked it, it's a bomb. But I kind of knew. I I didn't think it would have like wide appeal anyway, especially the type of movie it was. <laughs> but yeah, it's still it's pretty, pretty sad. But yeah, it's not too surprising that it did as poorly as it did. So yeah, and we continue HBO Max bombs with Cry Macho, Clint Eastwood's latest flick, and yeah, what. Uh, Sir, what? Uh, I'm running out of things to say, really. But yeah, this movie bombed. It bombed. There's no doubt about that. It opened with like four million, made ten million domestic, fourteen million worldwide. I don't know what the budget was. I'm assuming it was like in the low forties. Uh, thirty-three million. So, yeah, it, it's a disaster <laughs> compared to its budget. Not as big of a disaster as Reminiscence, but still, it's a bomb. <laughs> so, yeah, that's another strike against HBO Max. How many hits are we are now? Five? <laughs> Ugh. The last one was like in August, and we're like done with September. <laughs> and now we're in October, and guess what? Another HBO Max catastrophe. <laughs> It's comical at this point. The Many Saints of New York, the Sopranos prequel. Now, I didn't quite mention this in my... I don't think I mentioned this in my original video about this movie, but when it comes to, like, TV shows getting the movie treatment, particularly HBO TV shows, you can go two different ways. You can go um, in the Sex and the City... with the Sex and the City route, which that first movie did great. Even the sequel, as bad as it was, it still did fine. You can go that route. Or you can go the Entourage route, which did pretty, just not good at all. But this movie managed to do something even better. It did neither of those things. In fact, Entourage only did just, Entourage, you could say, underperformed. It just merely did bad. This did horrendous. <laughs> it only opened like 4 million, made 8 million total, 12 million worldwide. Like, goddamn. <laughs> like, you think, you know, with all the Soprano fans out there, I know there's plenty of you out there, you think a, a few more would have shown up to see the movie. But I think the HBO Max may have done way more harm to good than most movies because guess what? The Sopranos was already available on HBO Max to begin with. So, I guess a lot of people thought, oh, if I can watch Sopranos on HBO Max, I can just watch the movie on HBO Max too. And boom, there goes any potential box office revenue right there. So, yeah, releasing this on HBO Max, was, I think was way more harmful than other movies. Because it didn't help that Again, this is based off a TV show, and you put the TV show on that streaming service. So you can't blame people for wanting to watch this on the streaming service than rather watching it in the cinema. So, yeah. It it was a bomb. Hard bomb. And, and let's just move on. Okay, so it's another HBO Max disaster. So I know it's been very negative these past few, this past bit. Last real hit we had was in f fucking June <laughs> when it comes to HBO Max. Um, but, you know, not so far. Yeah, we've had five hits so far. That's going to change right now because next up we have Halloween Kills, our second and last uh, Peacock movie. Now, this game, the Peacock treatment, I thought was very weird because like, the, 20 the 2018 Halloween movie did great. It was a massive hit. Big old hit. Big old smash. Biggest slasher movie ever. Biggest in the series by a long... By a, quite a bit. And so given Halloween Kills, the streaming treatment just felt odd to me. But even with that, 
it still did fine. More than fine, actually. It opened with like 49 million, despite the streaming release, which really shows you that either people really wanted to watch this in the theater, or nobody gives a damn about Peacock. <laughs> One or the other. I think it's probably more the latter than the former. But yeah, it opened really good to the point where the rest of the tall didn't even matter. Because the whole budget was like twenty million. And plus it was the biggest R rated movie of twenty twenty one, so easy hit. Even though it did crumble hard <laughs> after it came out, like it fell seventy one percent. Second weekend held on well because of Halloween after that. That it, after Halloween it died. It absolutely died. <laughs> And it didn't. It only made like 92 million, 130 million worldwide, which is still way better than the majority of Halloween movies, but it's still way worse than its predecessor. So that's kind of a bad sign for the next movie that's supposedly coming out next year. But at the end of the day, it made money, so I'm calling it a hit. So this is our sixth hit of the year when it comes to streaming. <laughs> Six hit. Now, the last real hit. In fact, the biggest hit of HBO Max, at least domestically. Dune. Oh, Dune. This movie worried me so bad when it was coming out. I I was doubtful that it would be a hit. It had a lot going against it. I mean, for the type of movie it is, I mean, think about it. This is a two and a half hour slow burn sci-fi epic based off not so accessible source material. Does that scream success to you? <laughs> like, I don't think it does. At least it didn't to me at the time. I mean, you know what? The, even though what they, <sighs> I'm losing my train of thought. Like the cast is pretty solid. Like it's a very strong ensemble, and the director Denis Villeneuve, he's made some great stuff. Like he made Arrival. He made Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Uh, prisoners he's made some damn good stuff but here's the thing blade runner 2049 did terrible <laughs> despite being great it did it bombed hard which you know with this being a bit similar to that you know also being you know uh, based off a 60s book that was adapted to an 80s movie although blade runner 2049 that was a sequel to blade runner this was a reboot entirely Compared to the first Dune from David Lynch. But. Yeah. Like. There was that. And plus. HBO Max release. At this point was just like. It felt like a death sentence. <laughs> With so many bombs left and right. That I was legitimately worried. But. To my. Utter happiness. <laughs> it. Did well. It opened with 41 million, which shocked the hell out of me. <laughs> and it made 107 million domestic, close to 400 million worldwide. Second biggest hit for HBO Max movie worldwide, only behind Godzilla vs. Kong. But domestically, it's number one. Like, that's. <laughs> Who the hell thought that would happen? That Dune of all movies would be the biggest hit would be Warner Brothers biggest hit of 2021 at least in the states like that's crazy and I'm really happy about that because I really love this movie and yeah I'm glad people decided you know what I'm not gonna watch this on HBO Max I'm gonna watch this in the cinema the way it was meant to be seen and the box office shows that that's what people did and you know, I bet it makes Denis Villeneuve uh, happy. I mean, when the whole HBO Max experiment started, when it was announced, he was ultra pissed about it. He called HBO Max the worst streaming service. Like, he shat all over it. He was not happy. But even with all that, it still made money. And even better, we're getting the sequel. Because that was the thing. This movie was like a part one. And if that sequel never happened, it would have been the biggest waste of time ever. But thankfully, we are getting the sequel in two years' time, uh, which is great. And I will definitely be there to watch that. So, uh, 
yeah, Dune 2021 is an easy hit to me, at least, in the grand scheme of things. Some may think it's not, but I think it is. This has so much going against it, and it's still made money. So it's hit number... We were at five. No, six. Seven. Hit number seven. Ugh. Don't worry, we only have a few more to go. My voice is about to give up on me. But, yeah, we're almost there. We're almost there. Skipping it a little bit. Okay, Clifford the Big Red Dog, our last Paramount Plus movie. The second. There's only two, but it was the last one to come out. So, with this, again, as I mentioned with Paw Patrol, the family market was just not there. It was very just... It was just lackluster to say the least. And with this movie, I don't know, like, it got thrown around the release schedule a bit. It was at one point taken off entirely because of concerns about the Delta variant, but eventually they put it back on the calendar. And Plus had like a Wednesday release and Paramount Plus. It made things very confusing. But... Uh... I mean, it's hard to describe. I mean, its opening weekend was fine. Its domestic haul is fine. Not great by any means, but better than quite a few family movies. And its worldwide total isn't great either. I don't know if this is up to date. I can check. Uh, Clifford, The Big Red Dog, 2021. Da, 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 da. It's made 82 million, which on a budget of 64 million, that's not very good at all. But it is getting a sequel, so there's that. And yeah, this whole movie just, ugh, I mean, is it really worth talking about? I don't think it is. It's kind of like a whatever movie. I already talked about it enough in my prediction video. You want to know all my thoughts about it? Go watch that. But was well, like that movie. That video actually has one of my favorite thumbnails ever. I called it um hashtag not my Clifford because <laughs> I uh, parodied the not my Roderick uh, hashtag. But yeah, this movie it could have done a lot worse, but it still only did modest in the grand scheme of things. But again, it's getting a sequel, so someone at Paramount thinks this was a hit. So, there's that, I guess. So we're at seven hits now. That number's going to continue to be seven after uh, our next movie, King Richard. The second to last HBO Max movie. And... Oh... <laughs> Yikes. Yikes, 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 yikes. Movie cost $50 million. It made $14 million domestic, $27 million worldwide. Oof. <laughs> yikes. Like, there's several reasons why this happened. One, HBO Max felt like a death sentence for many movies, particularly adult movies. So, that's easy. <laughs> easy fatal flaw number one. Fatal flaw number two... Adult movies in general have done really, really bad. Did really bad in 2021. The only one that did somewhat okay was House of Gucci. That's it. The rest outright tanked. Hard. And this was no exception. So that's Fatal Flaw number two. Fatal Flaw number three. Even the movie being about Venus and Serena Williams. Two of the biggest names in tennis. And it's also about their father too. I think in the grand scheme of things when it comes to sports movies. Nobody gives a damn about tennis. Has anyone given a damn about tennis? I'm going to check. I'm going to check tennis. Uh, no. No. They listed Diary of a Whoopi Good Dog Days just because I had a tennis scene in it. But yeah, no. There's not a single tennis movie in history that's done well. So, that was Fatal Flaw number three. And, you know, even with Will Smith, yeah, with this, no one cared. But at the same time, Will Smith's track record this past decade has been spotty at best. And yeah, this movie was just doomed to fail. Which is, uh, I don't know, some would say this is, is a shame. Because some people who have seen it said it's really good. But, then, but again, 
Nobody cared. Nobody cared. And it was ignored. So, yeah. That's it for King Richard. And going all the way to December. Last streaming movie of 2021. And the last HBO Max movie too. <sighs> Matrix Resurrections. Matrix 4. Oh my god. <laughs> You know, it's quite fitting with the HBO Max experiment. It started with a whimper, and it ended with a whimper. Because that's exactly what happened with Matrix 4. My god, it did awful. Like, I I foolishly thought it would do better than average for HBO Max movie. But no, this did way worse. It only opened like 10 million. It's currently made 32 million total domestically. 107 million worldwide on a budget of like 190. Jesus Christ. There is there's no absolutely no positives to this movie. It's an utter catastrophe financially. And the movie itself was just um, after watching it. I don't I'm I'm kind of iffy on it. I'm kind of divided on it. But it's easy to see why people don't like it. I mean, the movie is kind of like the cynical reboot. That's kind of like, hey, we're doing all this stuff again. But we're trying to be all cheeky about it. Because we think we're super clever. And it gave me... The whole movie gave me Space Jam 2 vibes. And things... The story was convoluted. It was filled with exposition. It was... It, ugh. I, I'd rather forget it. But... Yeah, not even the meme lord himself, Keanu Reeves, could get people to watch this, which is a shame. But we still got John Wick 4 coming up next year, so fingers crossed that movie is good. It should be good. It's John Wick. But but yeah, that's a but again, that was a fourth installment. Fourth installments are usually a hard sell. <laughs> And they usually aren't very good because that's when you can tell they're kind of milking the series. And with John Wick 4, ugh. but it's John Wick, so I have hope. But this, this probably never should have happened. They should have just stuck with the true. Actually, no, they shouldn't have made the sequels either. They should have stuck with that original movie, and that's it. Leave it at that. By making the sequels, you made the whole thing worse. And with this, you just brought it down. The brought the series down even further. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, Matrix 4, complete bomb. I already went over it with, like, December recap, but, yeah. Yeah, and that's how it ends. That's how it ends with the streaming, the great streaming experiment of 2021. It had some hits, but a whole lot of disasters, too. So, yeah, when it comes to a strategy, financially speaking, it is terrible. It's a terrible strategy that leads to little to no success. Like, the success rate is abysmal. <laughs> so, it's no surprise that for 2022, this year, they're not doing it all that much. Although, that could change somewhat. I mean, we already saw it change recently with Turning Red going straight to Disney+. Plus, Not even getting a theatrical release. <laughs> But that's a whole different thing. I could have mentioned Luca going straight to Disney Plus. Like that happened. <laughs> and that annoyed me. And the same thing happened to Turning Red. And the same thing happened with Soul in 2020. Like for the past three years, a Pixar movie skipped theaters, went straight to Disney Plus. Not even getting the premiere access treatment, just straight to Disney Plus for free, which. Some would argue is convenient. Some would argue it feels insulting, but it, it, it's, it's stupid. <laughs> it's a stupid decision. But anywho. Yeah, like, this whole experiment just didn't work out. There's only, like, how many did I mention? Seven? Yeah, seven that did well. And the biggest of all of them, at least for Warner Brothers, it was Doom. For Peacock, Halloween Kills. For Paramount Plus, Paw Patrol, and for Disney Plus, it was Black Widow. But even then, Black Widow, I wouldn't call it a hit. Uh, Paw Patrol did good. 
Halloween Kills did good. Dune, in my opinion, did great. So we won't have... So... Yeah, it's just... It, it was just a bad, bad decision. But... Yeah, but it's all over now. We can all look back on it and either laugh or cringe or cry at the results. So, yeah. Yeah, and he, yeah, that's it. That's it for 2021. I'm never talking about this year ever again. And the next time we're going to see videos this long when it comes to recaps will be in freaking... I do summer recaps. My summer 2022 recap. Which will come in like eight months. So stay tuned for that when that happens. But uh, yeah. Anywho, yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notifications, share the whole drill. Want to check out more videos like this? Got playlists on the homepage. Fill of all previous, you know. Uh, wait, yeah, all previous recap videos I've done. All the monthly recaps, the multi month recaps, the single recaps. The big videos like this where I cover like multiple months, you know, big months and all the movies that came out. So you want to watch any of those, pick the, the ones from 2021, all of them. Go watch all of them. That way you can see how the year evolved. So you want to watch all those, go right ahead. Uh, there's also the Cancelled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. Uh... I just mentioned the one I did recently with Turning Red, going to Disney+. Plus. That's the most recent one I did. And with some of these movies, I cover them quite a few times. I have to find them. Uh, Where are you? I've covered Raya. I think I covered that once. Same goes for Tom and Jerry. I'm trying to find them. Godzilla vs. Kong I covered, I think, a few times. Mortal Kombat I covered a few times. Uh, trying to find it. Uh, Corella I covered twice. Yeah, twice. Conjuring 3 I covered a few times. In the Heights I covered a few times. Black Widow I covered quite a few times. Boss Baby 2, Boss Baby 2 I covered a couple times. Space Jam 2 I only covered once. Um... Jungle Cruise I covered like once. <laughs> Actually twice. Uh, Suicide Squad I covered once. And that was only because of the whole HBO Max experiment announcement. That never moved at all. That's really weird. Paw Patrol I covered I think once. Yeah. Yeah. Covered Reminiscence a few times. Malignant I covered a few times. Karimacho I covered a few times. My sister New York a few times. Uh, Halloween Kills a couple times. Dune a few times. Uh, Clifford a few times. One of my most popular videos was <laughs> revolved around Clifford. Um, King Richard, I think I only... I don't think I covered... Maybe I covered once with the HBO Max experiment as a whole. And then... Matrix 4, there it is. Matrix 4, I cover it a few times as well. So, yeah. If you want to watch any of the canceled episodes revolving around those movies, uh, go right ahead. Feel free to do so. You got 101 episodes. Go nuts. <laughs> go right ahead. See how this year, how things have changed in, near, in the nearly two years since I started the series. So, do that. There's also box office, no, uh, box office predictions or predict box office for movies. I just started 2022 with the 355, did that video. But if you want to watch any of the past prediction videos I made for all these movies I just mentioned, they're all on the playlist, 2021 box office predictions. You can find that in the playlist tab. Watch all of them, see how wrong I was, how inaccurate I was, because my God, it got embarrassing at times. <laughs> Truly embarrassing. So if you want to watch any of those, go right ahead. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.